Hey, I'm Carbo Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president of Carbo. Really excited to introduce new HK VP9 trigger spring kit for your VP9, VP9SK, VP40, you name it, it's going to work for it. We love what we were able to achieve here. 30% trigger pull reduction, so from five and a quarter down to three and three quarters. You can't beat that for a simple, inexpensive kit to get you this kind of trigger pull reduction, a pound and a half, solid pound and a half reduction. Love the way it feels now. So, so much smoother, cleaner, nice, crisp reset as well. You're right in that sweet spot, just under four pounds. Perfect. So no need to have a five pound plus trigger. Excited to hear what everybody's starting with and ending with. So we'll go ahead, we'll get into this install, try to break it down into a simple, concise format to do the installation. It's not as complicated as it may seem. So we'll try to break it down easy. Let me know if this video helps, if the trigger pull reduction, if what you got at the end was worth it. Really excited to hear the feedback. Let's get on our tabletop, put this baby in. Parts needed for this build, the M-Carbo HK VP9. It'll work for the VP9SK VP40 trigger spring kit. So all-inclusive kit here, lighter trigger return spring and a lighter sear spring give you a nice even trigger pull reduction. Pay attention to that factory reset, all right? That trigger is the way it is because of the way it's designed. So you're not gonna get some kind of improved reset beyond what's already there. We'll go into that a little deeper, but you know, the trigger return spring is definitely gonna make it a nice lighter trigger pull but it's not gonna compromise that reset. And same with the sear spring, it's gonna make it nice and light, but it's not gonna compromise any of that safety or reliability. We'll go into some of the built-in safety features on this pistol, which over the top, and you're definitely beyond safe in every way possible. Do all the drop testing and everything else to ensure it is safe, but you know, it's something I like to point out ahead of time, at least some of those nuances with each pistol, the design, what you got from the factory. So it's good to go. It's a really nice pistol, but that trigger pull could be a little bit better. Tools needed for this build, hammer, 1 16th inch punch, 3 32nd inch punch, 1 8th inch punch, a 1 8th inch roll pin punch. So you can see it's got a little nipple there on the end. So roll pin punch will be handy, especially in this build here, just because of all the roll pins in there. Bench block, micro tip flathead screwdriver, regular tip flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers. As always guys, make sure we're an iPro. And little caveat here, you know, we modify some of our tools just to make them a bit more efficient when working on guns. So feel free to get you some cheap tools and, you know, grind them babies down in terms of making them more accessible into those tight places. Because with firearms, you're going to have to get in there a lot of tight spots. So you can see these are some big needle nose pliers, but tips grinded down. I even put some tape on there. I'll show you what I did here in a second. But for this install, it was really handy to grip that trigger return spring. So by all means, get you some tools and modify them as you need to, to make life a little bit easier. I'm gonna start utilizing some of these little custom tools for a lot of the installs. But John Browning himself made a bunch of his own tools. So really if, I mean, he was doing it, there's no excuse why we can't do it ourselves. So we might as well. All right, as always, let's go ahead and check our pistols together, make sure they're clear. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well, this pistol's clear. All right, let's see what we get for a factory trigger pull reading. So we'll do a five pull average. So each individual pull will be the big numbers here. And then the running average will be down here and the number of pulls that in, all right, it'll designate how many pulls we've done for the average. So we'll go ahead and add them all up and see what this factory trigger pull looks like. All right, five pounds, 4.1 ounces. Five pounds, 2.7 ounces. Five pounds, 4.5 ounces. Five pounds, 6.6 .6 ounces. Five pounds, three ounces. So that gives us a average of five pounds, 4.1 ounces. So almost five and a half pounds, roughly. Five and a quarter, five and a half, five pull average. All right, let's see what we get for a trigger pull reduction. Let's jump into the disassembly and get to it. All right, so to get started, we start with a simple field strip. So you lock your slide back. You're gonna rotate that takedown lever down, release the slide, and there you go. Inherent with the slide there, you can see there is a slide safety right here. So the trigger bar has to hit this, all right, to remove this little safety right there. That's what gets in front of that striker to prevent that striker from dropping. So trigger bar comes back and it hits this. It moves it out of the way you know, providing clearance for that striker to drop, but that's it. So we don't really need to mess with this slide. We'll put it aside for now. We're gonna get right into the frame disassembly, takedown, and swapping out these springs. All right, so let's go ahead and review the frame here and kind of plan our attack a little bit. So there's a few ways you could always go about stuff, but the way we're gonna do it is try to do it as simple as possible. So, you know, you've got your takedown lever here, and looking inside, you can see there's a little 
piece of linkage here on the trigger that actually locks that takedown lever in place. All right, so when you pull that trigger, you can actually pull out your takedown lever. So you just gotta rotate it around just like that and your takedown lever will pop right out, which is nice. And we'll set that aside. All right, now looking at the rest of this locking block here, you can see your trigger return spring in there. That's something we're gonna be replacing. And just be thankful you're not putting in, you know, an extra power trigger return spring or something like that because this thing is beefy and it's hard to get out. So we're gonna use those needle nose pliers to get it out. Just take notice how that long leg is sitting there right on the frame like this. And the short leg is way down there in the back. And I should have recommended this, and I will now, you know, a flashlight is handy. So you can see right down here on the right side, see that little leg right there? All right, so that's pushing on the trigger to push it forward. That kind of gives you a good idea what it all looks like in there. And that's what we're shooting for upon reassembly. But thankfully enough, you're not gonna have to worry about fighting it too much. You're putting in a lighter spring, so it'll be easier to get in. But if you're putting the factory one back in, it can be a little tough. Another little nuance with that, since I got the flashlight going, there is a little pin down there. You see that barely, it's kind of hidden. See where my finger's pointing? All right, that little pin right there is what holds the locking block into the frame. All right, and the only way to get that out is just to push on it and it'll pop out right here. All right, so that is the pin right there. Enough blinding you with the light. All right, we'll get back to it. So locking block, our triggers in there with the trigger return spring and that little pin that holds the locking block into the frame right here. You know, it can be a little overwhelming when you look at this design, you know, but it's not as bad as doing like a revolver or something like that. All right, so you've got this slide stop lever and it's ambidextrous. So you got, you know, one over here and you got one over here. That can look a little, you know, intimidating because you're gonna have a few pieces of linkage here that are gonna all pop out at once. So you got your trigger bar right here and you can see this crazy looking trigger bar spring down in here. You know, it's nothing to be worried about. It's pretty straightforward. Now there is your disconnector right here. So be mindful of that. And it just simply drops into place. I mean, there's nothing crazy about this. You know, you can barely see it right now. It sits on the you know right side of the trigger bar. So here's your trigger bar and there's your disconnector riding along in the frame right there. And we'll go into good detail on how to get it all lined up. And then your sear housing back here you know, with your ejector right here. And the sear housing is real nice because it comes out with this one pin right here. So it'll be a simple little tap out the pin, pull that out, and away we go. You know, and another pin up here to get the actual locking block out of the frame. So pretty simple, straightforward, all right? We're gonna start with attacking the locking block first. All right, so we're gonna tap out this pin and then we're gonna go about removing the locking block from the frame and then the linkage that all comes with it as well. It does come in handy, you know, to have a few bins, you know, and these were just, you know, 22 LR bins, standard ammo, plastic containers, just pull out the little dividers and now you got a couple of trays, to throw your parts in just to keep them separated because when we're going through this, kind of do it in stages. We're gonna pull out our locking block with all the linkage, throw it in one bin, set it aside, and then when we get to the sear cage here, sear housing, pull that out, disassemble it, throw all the linkage in there. So to try to make it a little easier on ourselves so it's not as overwhelming. All right, straight to it. One eighth inch roll pin punch, this guy right here. You know, I'm just starting on the left hand side of the frame. You got a bigger hammer, it'll go faster. So it's gonna seem a little excessive here. I got this little baby hammer. All right, so you got these weird little alligator looking pins. All right, and the reason we're using that roll pin punch is you can see there's more of the pin on the inside. So we just don't wanna destroy these pins. So we'll set it aside in our little bin we've got going to separate all these pieces. All right, so we've got one pin out. Now we need to continue going and popping stuff out of place here. Remember that pin we were talking about that holds the locking block in place. It's right there where my finger's kind of pointing just above to the right there from that See those long stretch of coils on that trigger return spring? It's right there. So we're gonna push that out from you know, inside out. All right, there's only one way to get it out and you just gotta push on it, pry on it. And if it's a brand new pistol, you've never disassembled it, it'll be a little tougher than what I'm gonna show you. But there's the outside of the pin right there. So you basically just get your flathead in there and just push on it, you know, and kinda, you can go about it this way too at an angle, get you a little more leverage and you'll start to see it coming out just like that right there. I've taken it apart a few times, so don't be mad at me if it takes you a couple times because that polymer's tight. 
you know, and that pin is going to be snug. But it will come out just like that, and there's the pin. So skinnier little end right here is what goes in through that actual locking block. And then the fatter end here is what's sticking through the frame. So we'll set that aside. So we got both pins that hold that locking block into the frame out, so that's good. So we got the alligator clip pin out, we got that short little stubby pin out of there. All right, now it's just a matter of removing stuff, except over here on the right-hand side where your little ambidextrous slide stop is, you've got this little safety clip. Nothing fancy with that. You know, you can take your 1 8 inch punch and just literally stick it in and pop it right out. And it just kind of snaps onto that bar, just like that. All right, so you can see that clip, and it's universal. It doesn't matter which way it goes in. Just locks and hold it in place. Put that aside. Now it's just a matter of pulling out on this ambidextrous side for the slide stop. You know, everything is connected with this pin here. So it's got a long pin that goes through and then connects on the slide stop on the left-hand side and all the linkage in between, the trigger, trigger return, spring, everything. So delicately, you know, you just want to create a little space. You don't want to mar up your polymer here. And that's it, just kind of a little tiny bit of space. You know, if you're that worried about it, you can just use your fingernails. It might take a little longer. And be careful this trigger return spring. You don't want it going flying, so you'll put your finger over it. But I'm just going to kind of leave it aside so you can see. Just kind of wiggling it out. All right, so there's your disconnector right there. So you can see how that just sprung up and out. And that's what I mean by some of this stuff can be a little intimidating. And we'll lay it all out so you have a general idea, you know, where everything goes, where it's coming from. But just remember, you know, right-hand side of the frame, right here, this disconnector comes right up and out, just like that. So easy way to remember it is, you know, this little oval shape right here is gonna go down because it's gotta obviously line up and get the right alignment for the linkage right here through this hole. And then there's a little flat right here it's pointing down as well. So it's gonna drop in just like that. There's your orientation. And it's going through this pin right here. So we'll kind of start laying it all out so you can memorize it a little bit. And then the locking block is gonna come right up and out. All right, now there is a little piece here. I wanted to grab it. I don't think I was able to. Now it's all right. All right, now it's gonna be a big mess. Whoops, the daisies. <laughs> Here's your trigger return spring. Let me find that little tiny spring in there. You know, while I'm thinking about it too, this is your slide stop spring right here. Little baby coil spring. And it just locates right in that channel on the left-hand side of the frame. And we're gonna go into great detail on this when we put it back together. All right, so we're getting our slide stop from the left-hand side of the frame. We're pulling that right up and out. Just kind of shimmy it out of there. You can see it's got that little star feature, not just a clean hole, because that lines up with this weird looking little star feature on the right hand side, ambi slide stop. So they all go together and we'll kind of mock it up so you can see it, all right? And then I'm still looking for that little tiny baby spring. Here it is, sitting right under the trigger guard. And that almost accomplishes everything we're trying to do here. So let me just quickly show you, cause I didn't get to show you on the disassembly. You know, this one can be a little weird. This is another internal safety. So obviously these holes got to line up right here. And that's how it's going to be oriented on the locking block. But now, got to get a spring in there. So it's going to go in just like this, where you got that long leg on the bottom. You know, in our locking block, this is the top side when we put it in the frame. So long leg on the bottom, like that. So that short leg is going to have to get captured in that little tiny pocket in there, which is fine. It does a pretty good job, too, of holding it all together. And you'll see when we go to put it back in, you kind of got to pinch this whole thing in place, but that spring will just hang out like that. I got the long leg captured in that recess, same with the short leg. It's kind of nice, you know, you don't have to fight it too much. Now there is a little tab on the inside portion of this lever here, all right, that's got to locate under the long leg of the spring. So when we put it back in, you know, that's what we're doing. We're kind of basically going to drop that tab right in putting pressure down on that spring to keep it in place and to grab that leg. And then it lines everything up. And then the goal is, I didn't quite grab it right. The goal is to get that tension 
on there and you can feel it when you got it right. So go ahead and just, you know, practice this part because it'll help when you're going to jam everything back together. And you can throw your 1 8 inch punch in there just to kind of simulate and hold it and, you know, obviously compress it side to side here, but you should be able to feel that springiness right there. And that means you captured the tension correctly and you're good to go. So that'll kind of give you a little more confidence when you go to put it back all together, just knowing that, hey, I understand this part. You know, it's not gonna be something that, you know, freaks me out here. We go to put it together. So locking block, little spring, you know, little L-shaped spring, and this piece here, which technically by, you know, the exploded view, it's a dismounting safety. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> German guns, man. All right, so I'm gonna just set all this stuff. I'll lay it out nicely and we'll talk about it. But let's grab this one last piece, all right, the trigger. So we're gonna grab the trigger out of there and it just pops straight up and out. Okay, one big complete assembly, just like that. And then you've got it. You know, you got the hardest part done at this point. Everything's out of there. Sear housing is still in there, but that's so easy. We're going to tap that out with one pin. And it all stays, you know, complete in one piece, little assembly, super simple to drop back in. So one spring in there that we got to swap out and the trigger return springs already laying out here in front of us. So let's organize this and talk about it again real quick. Set the frame aside. All right, so this is a good one to go ahead and snap a picture of with your phone or something for just reference later. I'll lay it all out again before we throw it back in, you know, but quickly review what we just did and took apart here. You know, this is one of your frame pins, the alligator clip, all right, that we took out. Now this is the other pin that goes into the actual locking block here, all right? So that's what holds it into the frame. So you got, you know, two pins that hold the locking block assembly into the frame. We got the factory trigger return spring, which we're gonna replace here in a second. You got your takedown lever right here. You've got your right side slide stop, all right? So the ambidextrous portion. And then you got the little clip that locks right there on that pin. All right, and that's what's gonna keep everything from walking out, popping out. You got your disconnector here. It'll be going in this orientation. Remember the little teardrop going down. You got this little flat section right here facing down into the frame. You've got your trigger, your trigger bar, and that little, you know, windy little spring that comes with it. It just keeps tension on that trigger bar, pushes it up. And then you've got your other side, your left side slide stop. All right, and then you got the slide stop spring right here, which puts tension on both of them. All right, so that's kind of the, somewhat of the order they'll be going in, but remember all of these items are encased inside the locking block here. And I've got the locking block flipped around just to show you, well, the dismounting safety here, and then that little spring that goes in there. You know, and this is the orientation that little spring will go in where that little leg is pushing on the top here, long leg on the bottom here, and to capture that little detent piece that's sticking out on the underside there. So. Just a quick general overview. All right, let's go ahead and swap out this trigger return springs. So you can see this is your lighter sear spring here. This is your lighter trigger return spring here. All right, so you know, put that little lighter sear spring aside for a minute. Compare real quick, you know, the factory beefy trigger return spring and the lighter trigger return spring. So quite a bit of difference there. You're gonna definitely feel it and notice it. And especially when we go to put them back in, you're definitely gonna notice it. So try to put that factory one back in. It's gonna to be tough. You kind of do a little spring compression test. Doesn't quite do it justice, but we'll try. All right, yeah, that's a good try. Once we throw them in, you'll be able to feel the difference and see the difference, but quite a significant difference just visually. You know, the wire diameter is so much smaller on ours, making it lighter, you know, and some other design feature changes as well. So. Put this factory one aside, you know, keep that bag for spare parts. And then all of these, we're gonna throw into our handy little bin here. All right, but don't worry, we'll lay it all back out at the end. <laughs> it just looks messed up. Like, there you go, man, can you put it back together for me? Don't worry, we all do it. I do it here to some of the guys. Makes life fun. All right, now let's jump into the sear housing, all right? And it's nice and simple. It's really well put together to where you can pull this baby out, nothing goes flying. So this is the easy part. So let's do the easy part. All right, so we'll take our 1 8 inch roll pin punch again. Got another roll pin here. You know, I'm just gonna hammer it out from the left side. And if you got a bigger hammer, it'll go quicker. Another little alligator frame pin here. 
you can see this one is clean, hollow all the way through. So a good way to keep them, you know, separated. All right, so we can pull this punch out, no worries. And then we can just kind of push, we'll pull up and then pull forward. There is this little feature right here that locates into the frame. You see that little notch there? All right, now the frame is pretty much empty at this point, or at least everything that we need to do with it. So we'll set the frame aside. We'll kind of dive into this, you know, a little more detail. You'll notice right away, so our ejector's right here, all right, real simple. All right, so we'll just dive into this real quick. You see how it's all encased and, you know, one happy, simple little assembly here, love that. Now, something to keep in mind, you know, this is injection molded. You can see all these mold marks here. So you got plastic and you got metal outer casing. So when we're driving this pin back in, you know, just make sure that pin's lined up good because you don't want to destroy this plastic housing. Cutting costs wherever they can. So here's your ejector right here, all right? And this is your sear linkage in here, all right? And you can see the sear spring, just a simple coil spring right there that basically is driving that whole thing. So we're going to be replacing that with a lighter spring, helping get that lighter, smoother, cleaner trigger pull. And we're going to tap this baby out and just see what happens. I'm just kidding. We're going to tap it out and we are going to take a further look at everything and replace that spring. So, you know, the bench block's handy. You know, I was kind of screwing up my bench block just to make this disassembly easier on myself. And that's a nice thing about having some cheap tools. Because I can get it started, you know, and it starts kind of driving into the plastic. Plastic, simple, it's not gonna abuse the parts on the gun, most importantly. But you try to just prop it up a little bit and then drive it clean out. But these wings don't make it easy. So I was really just using this channel to kind of hold it all in, nice and tight. And then you can even position it like that on the edge because that wing will hang off the edge and give you some nice clearance to drive that pin through and out. All right, we're getting there. All right, so we drove our little roll pin out of there and you can see different type of roll pin. At least the pins are all different, so they're easy to kind of distinguish between one another. No alligator clip there, just a solid roll pin. All right, now pull your punch right out and look at that. You don't have to worry about anything exploding. It does slide forward now, so you can see how these plastic little pieces mate onto the metal cutouts there. So that kind of makes it nice. So only one way to put it in. So we'll just push that right out. Now, all we have to do is push out this little pin right here. And you'll notice on this side, it's got a smaller hole. So we're gonna use our little 1 inch punch and we're literally just gonna push it right out by hand. And if you push down on the linkage, it'll go out a little easier. I'm gonna leave my punch in there. Just a smooth pin all the way around. It's a solid pin, so it's not hollow, this one. All right, so we'll set that down, keep tension on it, pull my punch out. Now we can kind of let it all come apart here. One thing to pay attention to, it'll hook and locate. So you can see that, how it's starting to come out. This is the top lever here. You see how it kind of bites into that little cross piece there? So that piece that's going across, you can see there's like, right? two little tabs, kind of a cutout, and there's a piece that goes across. That's how it all locates together right there. That's the top piece. We're gonna pull it right out. You can see that spring. So the top piece, those two little tabs I was pointing out here and here, all right? It kind of just locates in like that. They just connect underneath. So just set that down. And here's our factory sear spring here. All right, we'll set that down for a second. And we're gonna leave this piece of the linkage captured in the housing. There's no need to take that out, all right? But we're gonna replicate it. Obviously, we're gonna get it to locate on this piece right here, but that's it, simple. All right, lay it out, talk about it, switch springs, put them back in. All right, so these are all the pieces you should have here in front of you for the sear housing. So we've got, you know, the metal portion, the outer housing with the ejector there, all right? And then we've got the plastic portion here, which houses all the internals, internal workings of the sear mechanism. All right, so we left a portion in there at the bottom. All right, we're not gonna worry about that. It's locating on that pin there in the center. All right, now the upper portion here, 
We did have to remove to get that factory sear spring out. And then our three pins here. So, you know, the alligator pins, those are the ones that hold the components in the frame. So those are the frame pins. All right, that medium sized pin, you know, it is roll pin, all right? So it is hollow in the center and that's what's going through this portion of the plastic housing, all right? And also through the metal housing over here. So that's what holds the two housings together. And that little short solid pin is what's gonna go through right here. All right, it's got a large hole on one side and then it's got a little tiny hole on the other. All right, just real quick down and dirty. We're gonna go through it. So here's the M-Carbo lighter sear spring here. All right, in the right. And then we'll grab the factory one here in the left. And we can kind of see the differences between the two. All right, so the M-Carbo spring's a lot lighter. So it'll give us a nice lighter trigger pull. So we'll put the factory spring aside. We'll throw it in that bag. And now we can start the reassembly. And we've got them all out here, so we might as well just get to it. So we take our lighter sear spring, we drop it right in that pocket, right in the center right there. And that makes it pretty easy to find and figure out. It's almost pretty intuitive. And then you've got this linkage that goes on top of it. And you can see there's that post right there. That's what's gonna go in the center of that spring. But most importantly, let's focus on getting this little hook right here, this little C cut out to locate on the linkage, right? That underside portion we talked about early on. So we'll just kind of pull it up to where we can see it there's that little piece that we want it to locate on right there. So what we're gonna do is more or less get it to locate now. All right, we kind of got it somewhat on there, you know, in the right orientation, kind of sitting at an angle right now, but we're at least lined up to center it up here in a second. We wanna get that spring now on that post. So we're gonna compress it a little bit, get that little guy to cooperate with us and line up with that post. And it may not sit completely in to the coil yet, but that's okay. We'll make that happen here in a second. You know, most importantly, we wanna make sure our linkage is good back here, underneath, it's captured, and you gotta kinda of fight it a little bit because if you, <laughs> you dilly-dally here too much, you know, you're gonna be chasing stuff across the workbench. So compress it all together. It'll just kinda of flow together. Just start where I pointed out, you know, get the linkage right, get the spring on that post and then compress it all. Take your little micro tip and you can kind of guide that spring on that post a little further and it'll kind of snap in place like that. And I'd highly recommend doing that. You want these coils to touch the underside of the linkage just like that. All right, and we got good capture down here on the other portion of the linkage. Now we're gonna compress it and we'll check it. All right, so we'll take our small solid pin we're gonna drop it right through on this side right here. You know, and if you're fighting it a little bit, you could take that 1 16th inch punch, you know, and capture it that way, and then drop your pin right in. Just make sure it's fully seated. Should be able to see it pretty good on the other side there. All right, so it's fully seated there. We're good to go. All right, good, so we got our pin in there. We got the top portion of the linkage captured in that coil spring, the sear spring, and then we've got the bottom portion of the linkage captured as well. All right, remember those little two little pieces and the horizontal piece? All right, beat that to death. Now we're gonna take the metal part and the plastic part, and we're gonna slide them together. Remember there's these little tabs on the plastic part that locate right here on that cutout. Slide it right in. Simple and easy, and then we need to run a pin right through here to hold it all together. So it's that roll pin right there, all right? And we're gonna get it started. A little trick I like to do, you know, I'll take my 1 8 inch punch and I'll run it through the opposite side here. Make sure I got everything lined up. You know, I'm kind of holding it by hand. You can feel everything pretty good this way. And then just give it a few taps. You know, let it kind of work its way in there. And this last thing you wanna do you know, is get this on. You don't need to do a vise or anything like that with this stuff, but you know, you just don't wanna just kinda start to line it up and then just start hammering away at it. And then you start to see this housing, plastic one, crack into pieces. And then that's a disappointing day. So, you know, if you got your flashlight, you can go ahead and look in there and make sure that everything's centered up good, which is what you want. You know, you don't wanna damage that plastic. And there's a lot more plastic in guns nowadays. So, you know, even more reason to be careful. So once it's lined up good, then we can start tapping away on it. And kind of check as you go, make sure it's still lined up. So it's looking good. 
And I can take my roll pin punch, kind of finish the job here. And then make sure you don't go too far. That's easy to do. As long as you're flush on both sides, mostly, you know, the pin's a little short, so it's good and captured. You just don't want to be uh, overshooting it. Try to make it as even on both sides as possible. Doesn't have to be 150% even, but you know what I mean. So good and captured, we're good to go. And we're gonna check the function now. All right, so it moves up and down. Everything's captured, moving freely. Good, all right, that was easy, right? Okay, good, I'm glad, because it's gonna get a little challenging this next part. So all right, the sear housing, you're just gonna slide it in. This little piece right here is gonna go into this channel right here. All right, and that's really all you gotta look out for is just getting that lined up, it'll snap into place and you should be able to see straight through the frame and then the hole that was on this metal portion here. The same concept applies, you know, we'll start this pin, we'll check our work as we go. You can almost feel it pushed in by hand a little bit and give it a couple little taps. You know, same concept, we're just gonna check with our flashlight. You can see that pin nice and even in there. All right, so we're good to go. We can keep tapping away here. And grab that roll pin punch, you know, to make sure that it's going in more evenly. And you can notice that difference right away, you know, just from hitting the outside. It just really helps center up that force on the pin, just helps avoid damage the pin. All right, good. Same thing, you just want to get that pin, you know, recessed evenly on both sides, which it is looking good. All right, so this portion is done. The sear housing is good to go. We got that lighter sear spring in there, which is awesome. And now we can jump into the hard part. Here we go. Let's get to it. All right, so these are all the pieces we're going to put back in. This is what you should have in front of you here. So remember our two pins. So this is our frame pin alligator clip here. This is the other pin that will hold in the actual locking block into the frame our lighter trigger return spring, our takedown lever. These other items here, I'm gonna kind of mention quickly what we're putting in first. So this is the left-hand side slide stop right here with the slide stop spring. All right, we're gonna put the trigger with the trigger bar in and then the disconnector in and then the right side slide stop, the ambidextrous one with the little safety clip that's gonna hold it all in place. All right, and then we're gonna put in the actual locking block with this dismount safety and spring. All right, so that'll be, Somewhat of the process, it'll be fairly straightforward and simple. You know, I'm gonna just leave all this stuff right here and we'll just throw it in together real fast. So I'm gonna grab this one down here. This is the left side slide stop. All right, remember that little spring, we wanna grab that too. So just throw it in the frame just like this. All right, there's a pocket right there. So we just push it into place, let it drop right in on the left hand side. All right, then we get that tiny little spring which can fight you a little bit. All right, it's a coil spring. Take a little synthetic grease, PTFE, or any kind of grease. Just something to sort of hold it in place. You know, I always call grease gunsmith glue because it does just that. It holds stuff in place and it's not gonna hurt anything. And there's a little pocket right there. Remember that pocket on the actual slide stop itself. It's cut out for that spring. So we're gonna drop that spring right in there and let it sit just like that. All right, good. Simple so far. Now we're gonna take our trigger crazy looking spring. You know, don't let that intimidate you. It's, it's on there, it's captured. It's just gonna do its thing. It's gonna flip around and act crazy. What you wanna do though, is you wanna get it to actually locate in that little pocket down there. So you'll see that little pocket down in there. That's where it's gonna drop right in and hold its spot. So don't have to worry about doing much more with it than that. So we're just gonna literally just push it right in like that and that's all it needs to do. And then just, it's gonna all come together here in a second. Just let it sit there, all right? So next we're gonna put, we're basically putting all these bar looking items into the frame first. All right, now we've got our disconnector. All right, this little tab feature is gonna be down like this, a little teardrop down in place. It literally just drops on the right side of the trigger bar. I mean, you could just, throw it in there like that. You do wanna make sure that little flat that we were pointing out, this guy right here, clears that little piece of polymer right there. So we could drop it in with a little more finesse than that. <laughs> but you get my point. I mean, there's not much more to it than that. It just needs to locate under that piece of polymer. All right, and then it'll all center up here in a second, come together, 
real nice and easy. You know, we got our three levers in place with the trigger, and next we'll be getting the locking block in place, and then running a little smaller ambidextrous slide stop you know, on the right side here of the frame through, and then a little clip to lock it all in place, and we'll be almost there. Another nice little benefit of the bench block, you can use it as a rest. So now we're gonna get the locking block, and the way this is going in, you know, it's gonna be going in like this, and you can kinda quickly take a look at your frame. You know, there's only one way for it to go in, just line up the big holes. You know, don't turn it like I just did. No need to do that. Because everything's kind of held in by thin air at this point. It's not gonna do much craziness on you as long as you just leave it supported like this. All right, now we're gonna grab our little dismount safety spring. We're gonna throw it in this pocket right here. You're gonna capture that little leg like that. And then you're gonna get your big leg captured. So we'll get it all captured in that little pocket. It's nicely milled out for us. Hold it in place, just like that. And then slide this flat piece right on top. Kind of compress it and hold that spring in there. And now we want to just get that little divot right there. Drop it in place, kind of like what we simulated early on. And we're holding everything in place and we want to make sure we actually captured that spring. And we did not. So we'll try again. So you can kind of go further to the right a little bit just to get some purchase on that spring. All right, I'm feeling it now. I'm feeling lucky. Yep, I got it. All right, and if you just want to be sure, throw a punch through there so it doesn't go flying away on you. Hold it like this. And I can double check myself and make sure it's under tension. All right, that's a good little check right there. So we're good. I'm going to hold it real tight, flip it around. Now I'm gonna drop it in like this so you can see that little tab, a little dismount safety that we just put in. It's right here on the right side. So we're just gonna drop our locking block right into place. All right, wanna line up the big holes on the locking block with the big holes on the frame. All right, see that BH right there? I'm gonna put this portion right on top of that. Compressing everything nice and tight. All right, good. Most important thing right there, just keeping that little safety with the spring in place and all these other components help do that. You know, it keeps tension on it while it's resting in there. So before we get, you know, too far ahead of ourselves here, let's go ahead and make sure we lock in this locking block. We're gonna take that little piece that holds the locking block into the frame. Remember that one that was a bit of a pain that you had to push from the inside out? Well, this is the easy part. We just push it in from the outside in. The little skinny end is gonna go straight in through that hole right there. I'm gonna have to push that locking block back a little bit, watch that little disconnector, and if it flies out, no big deal. You know, we can recover. Oopsies, there it goes. So we can recover from that. You know, some of this other stuff we can't. We'd have to go back into it. And I'm fully expecting every time I do this for that disconnector to just misbehave like that. So all we have to do is just put that little tab right there back under the polymer, that little section of polymer right there. So we get it to locate in there underneath and the rest of it will just kind of flop into place just like that. And then we're gonna make sure we get it nice and snug here in a minute. But everything is much tighter now that we actually got it into place. We actually got tension on our slide stop here on the left hand side. So things are coming together for us, which is nice. All right, so this is all we've got left here at this point. So we can throw in the other frame pin just to make sure everything's locked down good. No jumping away on us. Now that disconnector will continue to jump out until we get you know, that ambi slide stop in place with the lock and then obviously the trigger return spring is gonna go through it. So this is all gonna happen at the end more or less. And this is gonna happen at the very end so we don't need to worry about that. So we're gonna put our frame pin in, this alligator looking clip. It's gonna go right through here, that open hole right there. It's all lining up nice for us. So we can throw it on the bench block, start tapping it in, same concept. All right, starting to work its way in. Do a quick little double take here, just to make sure everything's lined up nicely for me, which it is. Go ahead and grab my roll pin punch, give it some good even pressure on there, tap away. That roll pin punch definitely does a nice job driving it in. You know, good uniform pressure on that pin. Is anybody surprised? Disconnector jumped out. 
Don't let it ruin your day. It's not going to be a deal breaker by any means. All right. It's just one of those things with this platform. As long as you know where it goes, we're good to go. So we got our pin in there, little leg. We've done this a million times. Goes under the polymer there, and then it just kind of drops right in place and just hangs out there. All right, so now it's gonna get something to hold it in place. Finally, here we go. You know, like I was saying earlier, you can use that little bench block to kind of hold it for you. Needle nose pliers, all right? You can see I put some electrical tape on there just because it's sticky, gives you a little more dexterity to hold this spring because you're gonna be pushing it in at a weird angle. You'll see here in a second, trying to grab things and hold it in place. It just wants to slip and jump away on you. So if you do this, you know, you can just grab your electrical tape. I'll just unwrap this one, just show you what I did here. Piece of electrical tape, sticky side facing up. All right, you're just gonna basically hold it on there tight until you can wrap it, you know, get some tension. Basically, adhesive on top of adhesive is what's holding it in place, and you know, that one's shot. So let me go ahead and throw another one on there for you. You don't need a lot, you just need enough to kind of make a couple wraps, holding it with tension, pulling it tight, and then just wrap it around on top of itself, and it's gonna stick on there nice and tight. So now you got some sticky fingers to really hold it in place because you're trying to grip a springy circle and that's not easy to do. All right, so the orientation is key. All right, we wanna make sure this long leg right here, you can see this is the long leg. Long leg is gonna be sticking right here on that little green portion. You can see it's all scratched up right there. And this little short leg is gonna go back into the trigger. You know, I'm gonna make this hard on myself. Uh, just because I like pain and suffering. So there we go. So I'm gonna, you know, try to position it really awkwardly. You aren't gonna have to do this, fortunately, but if I'm gonna be a good film guy here, I gotta get a good shot. So here you go. So the long leg is gonna rest in that little green portion right there. It's all scratched up. You can already see it. We've done this, you know, quite a few times so far. And then this short leg is gonna drop right in behind the trigger right here on the right side. And what we're gonna do is use our sticky needle nose pliers. So if you grip this correctly, it won't be nearly as difficult. And this is something I kind of learned over time. So if you grip that little short leg side, so you've got your needle nose pliers right there on that coil on the short leg. We're not worried about that long leg because the short leg is gonna go the distance here. So get a good bite on it without it popping out of place and we're gonna push it right in like this. It's kind of just, you're pushing down the long leg and then you're gonna drive that one, that short one straight back, kind of rotating like this, you know? All right, makes no sense now, but it will in a second. Position that long leg first, you kind of grab that polymer, and then you're gonna push straight back. And that might take a, you know, a couple tries here. If you're putting the factory spring in, you're gonna to have to do all those little crazy tricks, but you know, I keep forgetting the lighter spring, just grab it like this and just jam the thing in there and you're done. So the end, that's kind of nice. So one of the benefits to having the lighter spring and then you're gonna put in that Ambi Mag release, all right, on the right side. And this is what holds it all together. Make sure you get that pesky little disconnector looped in there because this is what's gonna hold it in place. Finally, something's gonna hold it down and we're gonna push that thing all the way through, all right? And once you've got your trigger return spring captured, you're good to go for the most part. You can let go of it, not worry about it. All right, now we still need to make sure we get it all the way through. Remember how the left-hand side slide stop has that star cut in it, and there's nothing you can see over here. So that's why it's got, you know, the, the male end portion star cut here on this, you know, right side slide stop and the female cut over here. So you just gotta kinda wiggle it a little bit and it'll fall right into place like that and you're golden. All you have to do now, take your little stop clip. It's universal, doesn't matter which side you put it in, all right, in terms of to have it left, right, flip, up, down, just stick in the clip onto that actual smooth portion, all right, of that little ambi slide stop, and then you hear it snap, locate, you're good to go. Right there, done. So we got it all together, hard stuff is over with. So now all we have to do is get our takedown lever installed, but I do want to say this, be careful, all right? Have your thumb over top of this linkage, pushing a little tension down on it because a little disconnector 
and the trigger bar are gonna wanna jump out on you and then you're gonna have to kind of push it all back in. You gotta be a little firm with it to make that happen. So let's just avoid that scenario. Keep our finger on there, keep your thumb on there and then just kind of pull the trigger like this. And that way there, everything stays in alignment, nothing springs out because we have to pull the trigger to get clearance. You can see that little silver piece, right? That's part of the trigger that locks and holds the takedown lever in the frame. So we'll insert the lever and then we're gonna pull in the trigger, but we got our thumb on top of the trigger bar, pressing some good tension on it because you don't want anything jumping out. All right, now we can get that takedown lever installed. All right, and it just kind of spins and then you get it pointing down like that. And then we can release the trigger and it's gonna lock into place. And now everything's captured and you don't have to worry about stuff flying away. So trigger bar and disconnector are still in proper position, all right, because they're, you know, more or less interlocating on one another. You got the trigger bar with a little tab sitting under the disconnector, all right? So now they're like a little buddy team over there. If anybody's gonna cause trouble, it'll be the disconnector and trigger bar at this point. All right, so we are good, 100% good on this frame now, okay? So we've got, you know, locking block back in place, all right, with our takedown lever, trigger return spring trigger. Got that little safety lock in there with the ambi slide stop. We got the left hand side slide stop in place, and the sear housing, trigger bar and disconnector in place, thank God. And now we're gonna take the slide. We didn't mess with it, good. So we're gonna just line up those rails. You know, we've got our little takedown lever pointing down. So line up those rails, push it all the way back. You can lock that slide in a position and then flip your takedown lever like that and we are good to go. We can measure this trigger pull and see how it feels. Do a quick little function check real fast. So go ahead and pull that trigger. Ooh, that feels good, man. All right, hold it down. Let's feel the reset. Beautiful. That reset is spot on. You know, this trigger is the way it is. I mean, you've got a plastic trigger and you kind of got a weird mechanism internally. So I think the reset is perfect. And you get that nice little snap in place right there. So, you know, the only thing I could see somebody complaining about the reset would be if you're like riding, riding, riding so slow and you just don't release your finger, but even then it's still gonna kick it forward. So, feels nice and light, perfect. All right, let's measure this trigger pull, see what we got and see what kind of percentage drop we ended up with. Five pull average, let's see what we ended up with, yeah. All right, let's see what kind of modified trigger pull we got. Three pounds, 10.4 ounces. Three pounds, 10.1 ounces. Three pounds, 8.3 ounces. Three pounds, 11.1 ounces. Three pounds, 8.5 ounces. So running average, three pounds, 9.4 ounces. That's pretty dang good. So three and three quarter pound trigger pull, and we started at five and a quarter, five and a half. That's a good reduction right there. So we'll just say five and a quarter to make it simple, down to three and a quarter, or three and three quarters, sorry. So about a pound and a half to a pound and three quarter reduction. That's pretty dang good. That's not bad at all for a simple little drop-in kit. So really like that. Let's go ahead and shoot some rounds and see how she feels and uh, give me my feedback on it. Hey guys, go ahead and run a mag through the HK VP9, let you know what I think about it. New trigger pull, you know, so right at three and three quarters now. Let's see how she feels compared to that stock five plus trigger pull. Not to mention the reset too. See if I can keep a nice solid tight group, you know, keeping that platform nice and straight level. You know, so let's, let's just shoot, stop talking. That's solid, man. That feels really good. I'm really excited to hear what you guys think about it. Can't ask for anything better. It's perfect. You wouldn't even really need it to be any lighter. And the reset is spot on, so it's good, repeatable. Keep it nice and flat. Keep it a nice tight group. Really excited to hear what you guys think about the new spring kit for the HK VP9. Anything else you wanna see for the VP9, we're open to it as well, man. Even a flat trigger. I know there's a company making flat triggers out there, but like 100 plus dollars, so HK prices. So. If you guys want some realistic prices on some HK parts, let us know. We can certainly do some stuff for it. Thank you, Car Brother, for all your ideas and your support. Really appreciate you guys. Give us a like, subscribe, share everything around, you know, the internet world. We appreciate it.
Thanks guys. As always, happy shooting.